Hi guys and welcome to this, the third video in this series for this particular section of the General Maths course. If you have no idea what General Maths is, don't worry about it. I don't know what part of the day I'm in anymore. My name is Darren, I am the Maths Guru, and it is beautiful to see you. If you are new, do me a favour, go to YouTube and subscribe. Why? Mm, not going to be rich, not going to be famous, but I just know that you're watching. And every one of those clicks, every one of those subscriptions just tells me that someone is watching and it makes this all worthwhile. I'm sad really, aren't I? Lonely. I just want people to click to love me. No, don't love me. That's weird. Um, what about MathGuru.com? Have you seen that? Oh my God, it's amazing. All these videos are in textbook order. They've got downloadable notes, time codes, exam questions, and so, so much more. So head over there as well, free to sign up. What are we doing today? Well, basically in the previous video, we were looking at the idea of bar charts. And we said, well, bar charts are great. We can do percentage bar charts and frequency bar charts but we have to write reports, we've got to analyze these things. Why is that important? You've got to write reports for maths, believe it or not. I know, weird, how huh? you just wanted to do calculations, write the answer from the back of the book. Not anymore, you're not, um, because all of this is building into further maths three and four, yes? In further maths three and four, statistics is a huge section, it has its own sack, six chapters of the textbook, and most of it isn't so much about writing doing the maths, it's about writing about it. So this is sort of an introduction to that. As I say here is a recap, all right? Recap, we've done categorical data, numerical data, we've looked at bar charts and frequencies. If you haven't watched those two videos, head over to Maths Guru or YouTube and have a look at them. They are going to set up this particular video and it's a short one, all right? Now, when you are describing categorical variables, all right, and the distribution of the data, and that just means a shape or the way that it currently looks, there are certain guidelines. And thank you very much to Cambridge for allowing me to use not only their examples, the sections of their textbook to try and highlight how important this is. And again, I just want to make maths easy for you guys. It is, trust me, I'm smoke and mirrors and I'm gonna break it down for you. So here are some guidelines. One, briefly summarize the context in which the data was collected, including the number of people or things. Think of this like English, you know, when they give you the prompt or they give you the essay and you will say, oh, in this essay dealing with blah, 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 you're almost reframing the question, right? So the first thing is look at the data, how many people are in it, the data they've collected and summarize it. If there is a clear modal category, modal means most, yes? So we're looking for the highest bar in the bar chart, yeah? Make sure it's mentioned, not just by name, but by height as well. Include relevant counts or percentages. Again, don't ever write a mathematical report without including numbers. If you may as well not bother, if there's no numbers in it, if you put the height, if you put the modal category in without the height, you may as well rip the piece of paper out, throw it away, and I know go to Macca's. Apply for a job. Yeah, that's not gonna work because lots of people work at Macca's, I gotta find somewhere else. Uh, if there's a lot of categories, it's not necessary to mention every single category, all right? Some people think that oh, there's eight bars, gotta talk about all eight bars, you don't. You talk about three, maybe four of them if you need to, maybe two or three, doesn't really matter. Either counts or percentages can be used to describe the distribution. Again, it doesn't matter. If you've got a frequency, you just talk about the frequency. If you've got percentage frequency, talk about percentage frequency. Don't do both. Both, don't do both. Okay, so on the right-hand side of the notes, which is maybe the left-hand side of the screen as you're looking at it, I've just got stuff as a brief reminder. So I've just copied what we had a moment ago to help us. So an example. Obviously, when I look at my table here, what do I have? A lunch choice, sandwich, salad, pie. This is the data from before, yeah? But now we don't have the percentage, we just have the frequency. Are we gonna draw a bar chart? Well, we could draw a bar chart, but on the flip side, we actually can just see from the data here, which is the modal category, how many there were, and if we read the question, it says a group of 30 children were offered a choice of sandwich. Hmm. In my data of 30 children who were offered a group of sandwich, pie or salad for lunch, blah, 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 blah. So I reckon my response is gonna have something like that in it. Uh, the responses were collected and summarized in the frequency table opposite. Use the frequency table to report on the relative popularity of the three lunch choices. A lot of language there, it just means which was the most popular, which was the least popular, talk about it. Ka-ching. Um, quoting appropriate frequencies to support your conclusions. That's just like saying, write the numbers. All right, so here's a suggested report. You can copy this into your summary book, change the numbers, but obviously it's more important that you understand. Oh my goodness, look how it starts. A group of 30 children were offered a choice of a sandwich, a salad, or a pie for lunch. That was actually the question. We've just copied that in to give context for what we're talking about. The most popular lunch choice was pie. Okay, 
Is that fairly obvious? It's the highest one. Chosen by 13 of the children. Oh my goodness, we've given the pi and the number. And we've said it's the most popular. Most, we could have said modal, we could have thrown in some mass words. 10 of the children, children chose a salad and the least popular option was sandwich chosen by only seven of the students. Now, what do we do there? We only had three data items, so we could talk about the most popular, the least popular, and the one in the middle. But for every single one, what did we write down? We wrote down the numbers that were included. There's no point with the statistical report if you don't write the numbers. Oh, here's another example. I don't know about you, but I went straight to the length of that one. I was like, Whoa. Now in this situation, what do we have here? We've got a frequency table with both number and percentages, and we have one bar chart. Now in this situation, what we notice is they've done a percentage bar chart. That's fine. We don't need the number one. We can now talk in terms of percentages. Not a problem. A sample of 200 people were asked to comment on the statement, astrology has scientific truth. I wonder how my report's gonna start. In a survey of, yeah, let's come back to the moment. All right, selecting one of the options, definitely true, probably true, probably not true, definitely not true, or I don't know. Now, here we've got five options. Hopefully my report isn't gonna talk about all five of those. It seems a bit of an overkill, but let's see. All right, the data is summarized in the following frequency table and bar chart. Note the categories in the frequency table can be ordered in a definite order because the data are ordinal right now remember it's ordinal so in this situation they've listed the data as probably not uh, sorry what is it probably true probably true probably sorry definitely true probably true oh, i can't read uh, probably not true definitely not true and don't know all right so they've obviously gone with a particular order that's fine here is the suggested report 200 people were asked to respond to the statement astrology had scientific truth. ka right from the question, possibly one mark. The majority of student respondents did not agree. How do we know that? Did not agree. Um, definitely not true. Here we go. 20, probably not true. Hold on a moment. The majority of respondents did not agree with 37.5 responding that they believed this statement was probably not true. Ah and another 22.5% saying the statement was definitely not true. So that required us now to actually interpret the data, to look at those two values and say, well, actually, if we add those two together, it's a fairly high percentage of the people who say, well, actually, mm, the majority of respondents didn't agree, yeah? Could you have just talked about one of those, said, well, the highest one was probably not true, followed by definitely not true, absolutely. Um, where are we? Over one quarter of the respondents thought the statement was probably true. Now again, they just chose one of the other bars. And you're going to say, well, how do I know this? This is too confusing. How do I know which bar to talk about? At the end of the day, believe it or not, it's not going to make a huge difference. As long as you talk about the highest, the lowest, and you pick one other bar to talk about sensibly, obviously it doesn't write it right rubbish because there's no point, yeah? Over one quarter, 27% of the respondents throughout sorry, thought that the statement was probably true, while only 4.5% of subjects thought the statement was definitely true. Now again, they talked about actually four out of the five, but they did it in a sensible way. I don't think you would have needed to talk about four out of five, you could have talked about three. So long as you got over the idea that you talked about the 200 people and what they did and they didn't like. And believe it or not, that's the end. I could do hundreds of these examples and each one would be different, but it's for you to learn and try and work out and piece together. Practice, practice, practice. But I'm done, thank you very much. My name's Darren, the Maths Guru. If you haven't already done so, subscribe, send the word out to your mates and head over to mathsguru.com and sign up. But I'm gonna call it a day. Thank you very, very much. Hopefully I'll see you in another video. You take care, I'll see you soon. Stay safe, bye-bye.